Hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something. And today on the workbench, uh, another PS5 Blu-ray edition. And this one, uh, I believe, is pretty dead. Um, let's see. Yeah, power's hooked up. Let's just see what she's doing or not doing. Which one of these is the eject? This one? Nothing. Nothing. And I was just noticing, I haven't checked in the past. I need to make a note. Like, when they're plugged in and not on, do you normally have 5 volts on the USB connectors? Because this one does not. There's a light on this little hub somewhere. Yeah, normally. And so there's no 5 volts there. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. I need to find out. But yeah, she's pretty dead. Uh, maybe I did supply this time if we're lucky. Uh, I don't know if it's been opened yet. I won't know until I get in there, I guess, and see the, the, the warranty sticker covers. So let's get into it. All right, well, I'm, as I'm taking screws out, I've already taken the fan screws out. You notice it's still sealed. It looks to be factory sealed, so maybe it hasn't been tampered with. That would be a good stroke of luck for us. All right. One day I'll learn how to take these things apart. Um, let's see if we have our 12 volts or not. We are overdue for a dead power supply. Um, can I do this with one hand? Hey, look at there. A dead power supply. Well, we get an opportunity to fix one then. I've, I've fixed four. I hadn't done any videos on them. So I have spares. But maybe we'll get a chance to fix one. Yeah, I'm, I'm making contact down in there. And I have power. Just not getting any 12 volts. Okay. Cool deal. Okay, I took that supply in and put it on the bench to be repaired uh, a little bit later here. But right now, I've got a repaired one right here. So let's just pop this in there and, and see if this is the only problem with this, uh, with this console. All right, I got my uh, spare supply in here. Let's give it some power. And I've got this ribbon cable plugged in. No fan. Uh, but we're not going to leave it on very long. I think that's, that's all we need. Let's see what happens. Oh, I was hitting eject and there's no... Yeah, I got my buttons mixed up. Alright, blue light. Alright, beautiful. PlayStation logo. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to go white at some point here. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. So it looks like she's going to be fully functional except for that power supply. That's good news. Well, we are inside of the workbench. And time to open this supply up and see if we can repair it. Um, which is something I don't recommend you do if you're not familiar with working on electronics. Because you can get hurt. There are dangerous voltages in here, even after it's unplugged. I'm going to remove this Wi-Fi antenna before I break it. Put that to the side. <clears throat> I hope I won't lose it. Let's see. Just two Phillips. And a whole lot of prying.
All right. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and discharge these capacitors. Now, I don't like I have to show this little tool, but very handy uh, little capacitor discharger because it actually shows you the voltage as it's discharging. To, you know, it helps reassure you that you're actually bleeding it off. Let me see. No voltage on this one. She did not light up. So this has been unplugged for a long, long time. Okay. So we're totally discharged. <clears throat> Let's see. Here we are. All right. <laughs> How about our fuse? Fuse. Still be doing a good job. The next place I like to check is these uh, main MOSFETs right here. If you can see them, they're just kind of standing up. Those. Nothing shorted. Nothing at all. Let's try some diode mode. Maybe we'll just flip it over and Is this thing working. When nothing is shorted, fuse is not open. Uh, there is a uh, small. You know, low value resistor right here, like the other ones have had. Looks like a 0.1. Or, yeah. Oh, it's a, well, it says 1 ohm. Is that right? Let me just zero this out and see. It's not a 1 ohm, I don't think. Null that out. Point 0.1. Yeah, it's a point 0.1 ohm resistor. That makes sense. Okay, and it's good. And it's good because none of the MOSFETs are shorted. Now this may be just a dead uh, DAP53. Uh, I have seen that. They will just die. Trying to think what else. I mean, there's no, there's no you know, obvious roach damage. No burn marks from lightning. What could I check? I could check. You know, I've got some uh, diode mode readings around this chip right here. If I can find them on my piece of paper here. Because I'm too lazy to actually put them in the computer in a, in a better format. Okay, that right there. Red probe on ground. Uh, let's see. How do we want to do this? I'm not sure. What's in the picture here? What's not? Um, let me let me take a quick look to see. Where's pin one? Okay, pins one in the upper right hand corner. Up here. So, red probe on ground, which is going to be the negative terminal. This one of these large capacitors right here. And let me just turn my little piece of paper. The way the chip is oriented, so I can keep up with it. Um, pin one. Dead short. Okay, that was a short trip. Pin one is dead shorted. What is pin one on this IC? I'll have to look that up. Two is also shorted. Hey, there you go. Pin three is good. We're probably good. Yeah. No, four is shorted. No, four is ground. Okay, four is ground. 
0 0.66, 0.65. All these look that is not connected. This is pin uh, eight. That looks normal. Nine, 10, that looks normal. 11, very close. 12 is no connection. 13, 693, that looks fine. 14, 15 is shorted. 15 shorted. 16 is all right. So 15 is shorted, as is 1 and 2. No, not 2. 3. 1 and 3 are shorted. 1, 3, and 15. 1, yeah. No, I'm off. 1, 2. No, I'm still getting off. Pin 1 is shorted. Pin two is shorted. Three is good. Four is shorted. Four is ground. One, two, and fifteen. Okay, one, two, and fifteen. I'm not sure what those do. Um, and that ship's bad. I mean, so anyway, let's get to changing it out, and I'll bet the supply comes back to life. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but these are my notes I took off a of working 400DR. So. All right, well, we swapped out the uh, DAP053. So I think we're at the point of testing. If I can get my load hooked up to this. Which one of these is ground? Other oh, labeled negative and positive. Let's see, okay. Uh, where's my AC power input lead? Right here. Run it under the meter, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Um, load is on. I'm not sure what it's set on, but and let's get our meter where we can actually see if this thing comes up or not. Positive. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Let's give her some AC. Nothing. Oh, am I not? Nope. Not doing anything. Um, let's see. Did our capacitors charge up? Before I touch anything, let's check. Let me get that out of the way. Our capacitors didn't charge up. Uh, I think my AC plug has come loose from the, from my uh, transformer over here, my uh, variable AC supply. So I don't think we got any AC. That's why those capacitors aren't charged up. Because if I hit it with AC power and those things did not charge up, either the fuse is blown or the you know the bridge rectifier is open, something is wide open. Let's try this again. My, my cord had just come uncoupled over there. You're not helping, Cord. Okay. Um, load is still on. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, 8.8. .8. We have a problem still. 
for putting out, I don't know if you can see it, I'm sorry. Make sure there's an 8.8 .8 volts is what we're getting out, not the full um, 12 volts. That's an 8 amp load. If I bring this load down, 7, 6, there's 6 amps. So you're still 8.6 wandering around, so we still got a problem somewhere. Hmm. Okay. That's how it wants to be. Turn it back off. And discharge our capacitors. Oops. Well, I like this little box because it, it slowly discharges them and you get that reassuring feedback that it's doing it because you see the voltage dropping on the little display meter right here but there's no arc there's no sparks there's no destroying your screwdrivers or probes or whatever um, so what is going on why are we getting 8.6 that sounds like a reference problem um, it's running so it's getting feedback, but it's getting it's getting error correction of some type, I would think, but it's getting erroneous error correction. Let's look at this uh, under the microscope. Okay, we are going to take a look at this under the microscope right quick, like, and if I can remember right there this is I see Get some more light on there it says 0 AR 0 X5 it's actually a TL 432 and that is what sets the your uh, your voltage and it does it via this uh, opto isolator isolator opto coupler whatever you like to call it here this one here and I believe in those notes I have what the diode check should be let's see what is that IC number 53 that's IC 53 let's take a look at that and here we have to you know we have to use two different uh, ground references because one side of this thing is on the uh, hot side one side's on the cold side so you have to use the appropriate ground Let's see such as here um, all right I see 53 And one is climbing. It's supposed to be like 1.49. Alright, it is finally there's a capacitor involved there. It's finally settled on 1.49. That looks right. Pin 2.629. That looks right. Okay. On the other side. get the appropriate ground yeah, oops get it in the shot this is the other side of that opto oscillator uh, right there 0.684 that looks right and the other one is ground yes and that looks great looks absolutely fine all right I am still chasing this low voltage issue on this supply and what I've done is I've gotten out a working supply to compare it to uh, this is a working ADP 400 and this is a, a non-working this is our broken one and I'm looking at some resistance readings 
around the IC53, which is the uh, opto isolator used for the for the voltage correction feedback. So if I put my black probe on this negative terminal, this uh, big filter cap, and go right to pin three of IC53, one side of this opto isolator. This is the hot side. We're dead shorted to ground. That's totally normal. And the other side, though, I'm getting seems to be very around. I'm getting 71 mega ohms right now. 70 mega ohms. Earlier that was like 20 mega ohms. It sure is changing. But on this working supply, I'll do the exact same thing, exact same point. 196 mega ohms. That goes that the pin I'm on ends up going back straight back to pin 16 of that DAP53. Uh, it's a correction voltage going straight back in there. And that's 196 meg on this working board. And here we have 65 meg. I'm just wondering as if our auto isolator has is breaking down. It's not short, it's not open, but it's somewhere in between. So what I'm probably going to do is lift at least one terminal of this opto isolator so I can get a measurement across it in resistance mode. Because uh, it should be wide open. But it should be like infinite resistance. But it, sometimes they break down and they're, they're something less than infinite resistance. So let me do that. Okay, I lifted lifted uh, pin 4 that opto isolator Let's see if we can zoom in a little maybe and I read like uh, 20 mega ohms so pin 4 is lifted so it's, it's isolated and if I go from I think it's from here to here it's varying around it's kind of weird. Don't know why it's varying so much. I'll make sure that terminal is lifted. And now it's 130 meg. I was just reading 20 meg. Let me make sure that's totally lifted. I was measuring directly across it, of course, too. Which of the other side is ground anyway, so. I'll go right here. So now it's like 86 meg. So it's, I don't know why it's changing so much, but I've got a, uh, a new one right here. Let's just see what it measures. Across pins 3 and 4. Um... my fingers off of it I think we're reading infinite I'll reverse the leads here just to make sure infinite no matter which way I turn these leads on three and four this opto isolator which is a uh, EL 1013 I think that's the number I'm getting my fingers across it now. So, why is this one measuring different amounts of some other resistance? Now we're 100 mega ohms. Anyway, I'm going to replace this thing. I'm going to replace this optimizer. Let's see what happens.
the opto oscillator, I see 53 has been changed. And it, it did not want to come out. It had to crush the thing. It's, it's glued down so much. So, so, what's going on now? Does that change anything at all? Or was that just a wasted effort? Um, okay, stick those down in there. Can we see everything? I think we can. Uh, load is still on and connected. What happens? Still 8.8. .8. Failure. Let me just check while I'm here. Am I getting the full 400 volts across these capacitors? Yes, 394. So power factor correction is working. I don't think it would run otherwise. But we're just getting too low a voltage out. At this point, I decided to take a look at uh, some of the other uh, opto isolators nearby. And this is IC51. I'm lifting pin three on it just to disable that because it was uh, it looked like some type of a shutdown circuit that could cause our problem. So I lifted pin three and that took that out of the circuit completely. Reapplied some power, and we had some good news. So for whatever reason, that opto isolator is causing the circuit to shut down. Now I just have to figure out why that's happening. All right, I may finally be on to something. Um, I want to show you some comparative readings between this bad board and the good board over here. Um, if I can get my microscope set up and going. So what we're going to be looking at is the area around the, I think it's IC51, um, which is the opto isolator that I lifted a leg on. And I think that's our area of concern. Let me see if I can show you better under the microscope. As soon as I get everything set up, this is kind of a tedious process. I don't have the best setup for this, but it is what it is. Okay. Let me get my leads. So... This I see here um, is obviously some kind of control from the hot side, which is over here, to the cold side. Uh, you have three opto isolators. You can see pin one is on this side, the cold side here. Pin one's on the cold side here. Pin one's on the hot side there. So obviously this is signals, control signals coming from here, going back to the hot side, from the, and here from the cold side to the hot side. And I know this one is the, the feedback, the voltage feedback. Uh, this is what sets the voltage output, 12 volts. So, and I believe this one, I believe, is a, is a type of shutdown. That is uh, something on this side, on the cold side, giving a command over to the hot side to shut down. But this one, I'm not totally sure what its job does, but it's obviously some type of control from this side to this side. And it seems to be also some kind of a shutdown because it was causing that voltage to be pulled down to 8 volts. It wasn't causing it to totally shut down, so I'm not 100% sure what its job is, but obviously it's from the cold side, I'm sorry, from the hot side to the cold side control. And lifting that one leg allowed the 12 volts to come up fully. Of course, we don't want to leave it like that, though. We want to understand what's going on exactly. And following this back um, here, uh, I believe this side's control it has, a, has a supply voltage on it which is like 16 and a half volts. The same supply voltage that drives the DAP53. It, it's a, um, a, a supply on the hot side of this supply. Uh, 16 and a half, 17 volts, something like that. And that's what's coming through this resistor into pin one, which is the anode of this uh, opto isolator. Now what pulls it, you know, obviously to turn this on, you have to, this side has to be pulled down to ground. What does that? Well, we have a, a MOSFET here. Uh, or a, you know, a simple MOSFET, a field effect transistor, 
uh, you can read the code W4R. That is just a 2N7002. And so here we have the, um, the source, which if I put my, uh, my red probe on the negative terminal of that big capacitor, um, let's see, uh, this is the gate. This is the uh, source, which is tied to ground. This is the drain, and this is the gate. So if this is the drain, let's do some readings here. We get a reading of 0.629 right there on the drain. And on the gate, I'm getting 1.37. Okay, that's red probe on, on the negative terminal of the, of the big filter cap. The common, that's the common point for the hot side of the board. So, 1.37, what does that mean? I don't know, but I'm gonna swap, and we're gonna put the new board there. Let's take a look at that area on the, on the new board, the good board, it's not new, it's a working board though. Right there is that same area, red probe on ground, and let's take a look there. All right, this side, this is the, um, the source, I believe, is, is grounded, okay? And this is the, the drain, I believe. 0.556, that looks fine. And we get over here to the gate, and we're getting open line. We're getting like a very, very high reading. This is in diode mode, diode check mode. So I have a feeling this, this MOSFET has broken down in some way. Not this one, I'm sorry, this is the good one. The one on the other board, this MOSFET Q32. I think has broken down. I do have these on hand. They're pretty cheap and common, so I've got like a hundred of them on hand. So let's swap that out on our on our bad board, and and uh, and then we will solder that leg back down. Let me get a board back in in front of it, so I'm not talking over a red mat. Where were we? Where were we? Right here. And my meter goes to sleep. Thanks. Thanks for your support. Um, we'll solder this leg back down over here and normalize this up after you know replacing this and see what happens. I, th I think this oppressor is good. That'll be a last resort, but I'm, that diode reading kind of tells me that we got a problem here. All right, our um, MOSFET, small signal MOSFET, has been replaced uh, right here. Q32, see it there? And I have soldered back down that leg of this uh, opto-isolator right here. So that should re-enable whatever shutdown circuit that is. Uh, I think we're ready to test this out and see if she works now. I'm gonna apply some AC power get where you can see the uh, load yay we're working excellent all right let's get this thing uh, cleaned up and back in its shell and we'll give it a try out there in that PS5 well here we are back out in the garage and we are ready for the final test of this PS5 which is in very nice condition I must say we have our repaired supply in there, so we are ready to uh, see what happens. Beep. Oh, there's a disc in there. I heard the disc spin up. We're going to get some video. 
Excellent. And what do we have in here? Um, Assassin's Creed Rogue for the PS4. All right, so it looks like we're going to be back to full functionality. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. thought it was interesting or educational. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the very next repair. So long for now.